Hi, class. This is the second uh, of the mini lectures on um, economics and ethics of food uh, and agriculture. So I'm just going to share my screen with you again. This comes from the COVID lecture that I gave uh, and shows um, this relationship we have between in a food uh, value chain, uh, between food supply, food demand, uh, the market, as well as uh, value addition. Today, I'm going to kind of break that down and focus on food demand. This is the simple economics of food demand. We have a certain number of assumptions. Uh, these are five assumptions that we're making. We assume that we want to be happy. So consumers, so we as consumers, we're all consumers, we want to be happy. We get happiness or utility from consuming stuff. Uh, so we get happiness from consuming goods and services, including food. The more stuff we consume, the happier we are. Uh, we, get, we assume that we get less extra happiness from every unit that we consume. We get a lot of happiness from the first unit we consume, a little bit less from the second, a little bit less from the 10th. By the time we get to the 30th unit, we're not getting that much extra happiness, but a little. We don't get to the point where we get zero or negative happiness from consuming more, is our assumption. Um, we then can take that, those assumptions, um, put that into a kind of a mathematical problem that a consumer would have. Uh, the consumer has the uh, mathematical choice and problem of, of maximizing the amount of happiness they get from consuming stuff subject to the amount of money that they have available to buy stuff. Uh, so in this case, we could think about food. If we look at that bottom line then, uh, in a world in which we have hot dogs, broccoli, and cell phones, uh, our income constraint or our budget constraint would be the amount of income we have has to be greater than or equal to the amount that we spend on hot dogs, the amount we spend on broccoli, the amount we spend on cell phones, and the amount we spend on each depends on the price of that thing times the quantity of that thing. So we, if um, hot dogs cost $1 per package, we consume one package, uh, then that's a total cost of $1 for hot dogs. Okay. We um, can frame that also. If we do some differential calculus uh, on that. So we have the problem of maximizing happiness from consuming these three things, hot dogs, broccoli, and cell phones. Um, we can do differential calculus. We get the first order conditions. We solve for three, th these three variables. Then we can get the, uh, some relationship between quantity demanded of hot dogs, quantity demanded of broccoli, quantity demanded of cell phones, as a function of these other variables of our income, the prices of the three goods, and our preferences. Uh, one thing that we like to do in economics is kind of isolate some of the dimensions of that function, right? Um, let's say we want to isolate the prices of other goods, the income of preferences, and we show that here by having the solid line over top. So these are fixed. We're fixing price of broccoli, price of cell phone, income of preferences. We're looking at the relationship between quantity demanded of hot dogs and price of hot dogs. And uh, that's depicted by this red line, uh, so that as the price of hot dogs goes up, we consume less. There's some reservation price above which we won't consume any hot dogs, and as the price goes down, we'll consume more. Uh, we can also show in this same space, if we wanted to show an increase in income or a change in price of substitute goods, we show that as a shift up or down in that demand function. Um, most goods we, as, we assume to be, and, and the empir our empirical evidence is that most goods are substitutes, uh, so, uh, so that uh, the higher price of a hot dog uh, means we are consuming less hot dogs, uh, but we might shift some of our budget over to consuming more broccoli, who, who's, if the price of broccoli hasn't changed. Some goods are complements. Uh, so for example, we might think of hot dogs and ketchup as complements if when we eat ketchup, it's always on hot dogs. And so if we had a higher price of hot dog, we lowered our consumption of hot dogs, um, and therefore uh, we also 
as that complementary good squeezing on our ketchup. There's less hot dogs we want to squeeze ketchup onto, therefore it lowers demand for ketchup. Another relationship we look at as an economic relationship of food demand is about the angle function, how the quantity of a good, because the quantity demanded of a good, it relates to our income. So here we've got the same uh, demand function, QD is a function of income, the three prices and preferences. Let's hold the price of hot dogs. Let's hold the prices of uh, the other goods, cell phones, broccoli, constant. Let's hold preferences constant. And just look at that relationship between income and quantity demanded of um, hot dogs. We call that the in angle function. So therefore, if we have a rise, a change in income, it's shown as a movement along that red line. Uh, if we want to change, if we change any of the other um, factors affect demand, the prices or preferences, that would be a shift in the angle function. Um, here, um, so we'll, before we talk about substitutes and complements, here we're talking about uh, the relationship with income. We say some goods are normal in that if we have higher income, we want to consume more of them. Um, some goods are inferior, and that is when we have, we, if we have more income, we want to consume less of it, or we do consume less of it. Um, so those are what be called inferior goods. So those be things where you really don't want to consume more of as you get more of income because uh, you don't consider it to be a, you know, kind of a high quality product. So uh, you might think about craft Dinner. Uh, as you uh, have more income, you may not consume more craft Dinner. You might, you might uh, shift out of craft Dinner consumption. And some of you will, are waiting for that to happen. So, um, or rama might be another, noodles might be another one. Um, uh, there's two uh, fundamental kind of laws of food consumption that we think about. One is Engels law. Uh, Engels law, or sort of not really law, but more of a, a, what we usually find in most countries, we usually find that as ri income rises, the percent of income spent on food declines. Uh, so a little bit more like the bottom red line. So we have um, generally uh, uh, the increase of incomes allows us to shift some of our expenditure away from food into things like clothing or cell phones, for example. Another we, something we call a law, but is more a, a, an empirical finding, a, a general finding, is called Bennett's law. Uh, so it's been found so much, there's sort of something that we assume that, that will tend to happen. As income increase rises, the percent of food expenditure spent on calorie-rich, calorie-dense, starchy staple foods declines. So the total amount spent on, those, on that type of food may increase a bit, but the percentage of, that, of your budget on food declines. Okay, So that's for calorie-dense foods. At the same time as uh, expenditures, the percent of expenditure on nutrient-dense foods like meats, oils, sweeteners, uh, fruits, and vegetables increases. So people are shifting some of their income away from staple foods and toward these nutrient-dense foods or higher, what you might call higher value foods, um, which are the are fruit and vegetables and livestock products primarily. Two last things we're gonna do now is um, just one about an insight. So what's the insight we get from this? We, one of the things is that uh, e economics is about what happens at the margin. So we think about what, what's the marginal change if we have one, if we have a little bit higher price, what is, how does it affect us? Uh, if uh, if we have a little bit more income, where are we going to spend that income? Uh, so we have a lot of focus on that kind of what happens at the margin. If we have, if I eat more and more hot dog, uh, what, how, what will it cost me uh, in terms of money, but also in terms of what amount of broccoli or cell phone coverage if I hadn't spent that money on hot dog, if, I, if I'd chosen to spend my money elsewhere. So therefore, uh, following from this consumption economics perspective is that policies then 
uh, tend to focus, so the economic policies would focus on prices and income, those things which we see as sort of fundamental elements of our, uh, the food budget. Uh, so if we wanted to have people consume less of a thing, then we might want to increase its price somehow, for example, putting a tax on it. So we might, that's why we talk about things like fat taxes or sugar taxes. If we want to have people to consume more of a thing, um, perhaps uh, dairy products, then we might want to subsidize that thing or reduce sales tax. So many places have zero sales tax on food. Um, and the other thing we might think about are changing income. And so that's why we thought when we think about uh, people being short of food during the COVID-19 due to loss of their job, we think about augmenting their income might be the primary way that we increase their food consumption. I'm going to close then. Thank you.